Senior International Aya Party Confederation and author of the book, which we released today. Respected T. Sita Lakshmi, founder of Akilam Academy. Respected P. Durai Palam. Respected Suresh Pono. All the distinguished persons present here, all the devotees of Ayya Vaikuntha Swami across the world, <laughs> brothers and sisters, on the auspicious occasion of 192nd Avatar Dinam of Ayya Vaikuntha Swami. My best wishes and greetings to all. <laughs> this is a very special day. We know yesterday was the day and today we are releasing the book and we are assembled here. One year back, in March 2023, I had the blessings of visiting Sami Topu in Kanyakumari. <laughs> because when I came to Tamil Nadu, and when I started knowing about the rich, a spiritual history of this place, right from thousands and thousands of years ago, since then, how many great people, great souls have appeared on this land. And when I got to know about Ayya Vaikuntha Swami. I was very interested, very keen to visit one of the places there and then get to know about what all he did. We are all fortunate to belong to a country, to belong to a to be born at a place where Narayana himself had appeared in human form from time to time. And one such time was 192 years ago <laughs> when Ayya Vaikuntha Swami appeared. In the Preceding address, Advocate Ram Lingam, and also Tirumati Sita Lakshmi, she mentioned, they mentioned about, and also the speak, other speaker mentioned about the circumstances, the prevailing environment in which Ayya Vankunta Swami appeared. I think we have to appreciate the socio-cultural and historical context in which Ayya Vankunta Swami appeared. We know that in our country, Bharat, From time immemorial, whenever there has been severe decline of dharma, whenever dharma has come under, and dharma means sanatan dharma, 
I mean, it has come under severe threat. Lord Narayan himself appeared to save the dharma, to protect the dharma, and to remove our dharma from time to time. We know that at one time, Sri Rama had appeared. Again, Narayan appeared as Sri Rama. At one time, he appeared as Sri Krishna. And in that tradition, Narayana appeared also about 192 years ago as <laughs> Ayya Vaikuntha Swami. Sometimes we all mention about that, yes, he appeared, he tried to remove the social discrimination, he brought people together. He taught the lessons of Sanatana Dharma. We know that his work, Akhilatira to Ammanai, is the essence of Sanatana Dharma. <laughs> but it is important to understand the socio-cultural and historical context. What was the situation? What was so serious? What was so threatening in our, in our country, in our society, that Narayan himself had to appear? No, that part, I think, should be studied and it should be available to our younger generation for them to know. Because in a normal situation, when there is a, some a small, something happens here and there, Narayana doesn't come. Something was very, very serious. There was overall attempt to destroy Sanatana Dharma. And what was the background? I will just try to give a short background of the socio-cultural historical context of the time when Ayya Vaikuntha Swami had to appear. We know that in the year 1600, East India Company was formed. We know this Sanatana Dharma, is its essence is we are all equal. We are all children of the same divine. There is no big, there is no small. We are all equal. And in that spirit, when people from, came from all over the world, in our country, Bharat, we welcomed everyone. And that is why Christianity came to Bharat even before it reached Europe. We have the oldest mosque built during the time of Prophet Muhammad in Bharat because we did not distinguish, because we all, believing in Sanatana Dharma, we all believe that we are all one and the same family. The problem began when people from outside, they started, they when some of the people they started, when they came, they started destroying this, this our dharma, that we are all equal, we are all children of the same God. We are all brothers and sisters. This is all inclusive. In fact, Today, last year when India hosted, the, our country, Bharat, hosted the G20 presidency, you know its theme was Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, Yadu Mure Yavarum Kreme. <laughs> this is what Ayya Vaikuntha Swami also taught us. We are all members of the same family. But the problem started when 16, in the year 1600, when East India Company was formed by the British, 
and they came for trading, one of the tasks given to the East India Company was that you must evangelize wherever you go. You must change the people's faith, bring them to gospel. And so they came, they were doing trading and also spreading the faith. But what changed later, 150 years later, in 1757, when in Bengal, Battle of Palasi, the East India Company captured Bengal. The local ruler was defeated and they captured the territory, Bengal. After they captured Bengal, then they started wondering that we were doing the trading business community, now we have captured territory. What should we do? British government also thought over it. And then they decided that look, first the request was that of the company was, the East India Company requested the British government that look, we will do the trading, you take over the administration. And this issue was seriously debated in the British government. But after all this debate, they realized that they cannot colonize this country the way they colonized America, Australia, other places, Canada. You know, they had gone and colonized, previous to that, they had gone and colonized those areas. What they had done there, they had destroyed the local population, they had killed the local population, not by war, but by spreading diseases. A smallpox infested blankets were given to the native people. And the colonies after colony, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, lakhs of people died. They killed them and then they captured. This is how America was born. This is how Canada was born. This is how Australia was born. So the question was, will they be able to do similar thing in Bharat? And then they realized, no, they cannot. Because Bharat, though it is very large, it is very organized. People have different languages. People are speaking different languages, wearing different dresses. Different, eating different food, but uh, still they are all united. They are all united because of Sanatana Dharma. <laughs> People from north, from any part, I know my grandmother from Bihar, she came to Rameshwaram, she came to Kashipuram. People from here, thousands and thousands used to go to Kashi and other places. So people were moving there were many rulers, many kings, but people, the society, the samaj was united. And what united this samaj was Sanatana Dharma. That you may speak any language, you may eat whatever food you have eat, you may dress the way you want, but still we have one faith, Dharma, that we are all brothers and sisters. And that is how, when we, people came from all over the country to Rameshwaram, to Kanchipuram, to all the places, these Rameshwaram, Ramanatha Swami Kovil, it did not belong to Setupati, or it did not belong to the ruler of Rama. It belonged to the whole of Bharat. Similarly, Kashi did not belong to the king of Kashi, it belonged to the whole Bharat. We had so many Tirtham, so many institutions all over the country, which belonged to the whole Bharat. So even though people had different languages, speaking different languages, different dresses, different, still they were all united. So they cannot replicate what they did in Canada, America, or Australia. So 
what should we do? Then they said, you must destroy the Sanatana Dharma. That was their, that became their agenda. Because if the British had to rule here for longer period, they knew that the threat is from this Sanatana Dharma. Because people across this huge country, they are all united. And so they started working on this policy, how to destroy. Earlier, the East India Company was evangelizing. They were a spreader. But when the British started, when they, after capturing the territory, first Bengal and then other parts, and by 1801, even this Madras presidency was captured by the British. So they had captured, by and large, by 1800, 1801, they had almost captured the whole country. And so they said, they decided that if they had to, if they have to continue here for long, the only threat was from Sanatana Dharma, so they must destroy. So, in 1813, 1813, British Parliament passed a law. And the law is called India Charter Act 1813. In that India Charter Act, it is mentioned that the responsibility of the British in India is to evangelize India, to destroy Sanatana Dharma. To, it became a British government policy through an act. Earlier it was a company which was doing it and after 1813 it became a project of the British government to destroy Sanatana Dharma and evangelize India. You know, even in 1858, 1858 when the British government took over, removed the company and took over the government directly, at the time, the British Prime Minister was Henry Tim Templeton. Now, Henry Templeton, when he, he is, is spoke in British Parliament, because when the British government took over, they had to explain to the Parliament why did they take over from the company. So, Henry Templeton, the then Prime Minister of Britain, he delivered a speech. In his longest speech, he mentions that evangelization of India is not only our duty, duty because duty is coming from the gospel earlier time that we must evangelize, but it is our necessity, a necessity, you know, because if we have to continue in India for long, we have to evangelize India. That was a stated by British Prime Minister himself. So, after 1813, India Charter Act, what the British government started doing, they had a body called Society for Propagation of Gospel, SPG. And then, after 1813, they started recruiting large number of volunteers. Mostly they were school dropouts, high school dropouts. And it was in that, and they started recruiting and bringing it to India, giving them some basic teaching in Bible, and asking them to now evangelize with the protection of the British government, British or British military. It was in that background that Robert Cald Caldwell, G.U. Pope, they were all recruited by Society for Propagation of Gospel, SPG. They were, uh, Robert Caldwell, I saw somewhere written there he was a graduate. He is a school dropout. He didn't cross, he, he, he didn't pass even high school. These are the false information given on this Wikipedia and all the nonsense. He was not even, he was a person who couldn't even clear his high school. But they picked up such people and brought them to a, India. Different parts, Carl Caldwell and Jew Pope, they were brought in Madras presidency, many others. 
And then they started with a strong force evangelizing, conversion. In fact, I do not know how many of us are aware that at the time, they had, by the time, 18, 20, 25, 30, they had closed all the schools which were running here since long, long time, hundreds of years ago. Native schools were closed. Only missionaries were allowed to have the schools. And their admission was only if you are baptized. Unless a child is baptized, will not get admission in the schools. These are fact. Somebody will say that, okay, governor is talking like this. It is a historical fact. We must confront the truth. This is what happened in the past. They were not admitted. They had to, compulsorily, they had to study and pass tests in Bible. Nothing wrong in Bible. I don't have any enmity. I, in fact, I myself, I, I, I love Jesus. I have no problem with Jesus. I have no problem with even Bible. But they made it compulsory, because as a Sanatani, I believe that all are equal. So in 1839, imagine, 1833, Ayya Vaikunth Swami appeared. It was at that time, 1824, Sri Prakash Ballalar had appeared. All these people had appeared because Sanatana Dharma was being destroyed by the British. So 1839, 90,000 people of Madras presidency, they signed a petition. It was presented by Gazulu Lakshminarasu Shetty. He, 11th of November, 1839. I'm giving all these dates because these are all verifiable. These are all documents there in the archives. It is not my imagination. 90,000. Imagine at that point of time what was the population of our country. Nothing. 1947, we were 33 crores. Imagine 100 years before, what was the population? And Madras presidency, around. 90,000 people signed a petition. This three page petition. It tells all about, ki, please, please don't destroy our dharma. Don't put a condition that a child has to be ba baptized before admission, not otherwise not admitted. Please, this is not, it is not done. In fact, Gazulu uh, Lakshmi Narasu Sethi, he has started a journal from here called Madras Crescent to give a voice to the native people, our origin in Indian people. Because the newspaper at the time was all controlled by the British. This through that, if you, it, these are all there in the archives. And I urge the students, I urge the scholars to go and do the research. You read the Madras Crescent. It was a First it was a weekly, then it became bi-weekly. It, it went on, it was published for almost about 20 years. By 1863, 64, they had closed it because they found it not in their interest because they, was, they, they, they thought that it was creating awareness among the people against the British. So that was a period of acute suppression and oppression. It was a period of existential threat to Sanatana Dharma. It was in that background that Ayyavaikunta Swami had appeared. And he, and you know, when they started what they call is harvesting soul, <laughs> you know, they say conversion is harvesting soul. Even somebody voluntary goes, it's all up to choice because we don't distinguish between any faith. We believe all fine. But harvesting of soul, it became the responsibility of the British government. 
they started targeting mostly the people who were poor and marginalized. And it was in that background that all these Bishop Caldwell, they all started concentrating in Chirnal Valley and all the South Tamil Nadu area. He started targeting them and he's the one who wrote a very, very fake book, Grammar of Dravidian Languages. The person who has not even done the college, who has not crossed the school, he claimed to be a philologist, a great non, n n a linguist. And, and here people quote it. Because people here, even today, <laughs> there are people who want to destroy Sanatan Dharma. Why, what a strange thing. Look, this is, cannot be. This is, Sanatan means indestructible. Sanatan means it has been always there and it shall always be there. You cannot destroy it. Sanatan is where all are inclusive. In fact, the world, the world is looking forward to Sanatan. Because all other, all other faith, all other systems are divisive. Mind, my way or highway. That is how everyone says. They are, they are, you, know, you know, others say, but we say no. We are all Hindu. Vasudhai Vakutumbakam. We are all one. This is the only. So first and foremost, anyone who has got any idea of people that Sanatan can be destroyed is, is uh, I think, uh, and I, I don't blame them. It was essentially they are the people who also, during the British time, they had collaborated with the British. Not that they are, they are the people who actually, they were not very happy with the independence of Bharat. And that is how on 15th of August 1947, they had observed as a black day. So if in their line, their followers, if today they talk against Sanatan, nothing, I'm not surprised about it. But the fact is that today, our country, Bharat, is awake. Is awake and moving forward. Moving forward in every field. Economic field, cultural field, a spiritual field. There is an overall resurgence. A new Bharat is taking birth. And we are all fortunate. We are all fortunate to be living at this age. Ex witnessing it and at the same time, we are also a participant. We are also playing our role wherever we are, a small or large, to make it happen to make Bharat emerge great with its values, Sanatan values. You know, when the Prime Minister says, Prime Minister Modi says, Sabka Saat, Sabka Vikas. Essentially, it's Sabka Saat, Sabka Vikas. Let every, keeping all together with for everyone. This is nothing but the essence of Ayya Vaikuntha Swami, what he said. <laughs> everyone thing. Everyone, there is no difference, whatever we, no, there is no difference at all, everyone. That is how all the schemes today, whether it is health, Aishman Bharat, it is for everyone. It, there's no, there is no politics in it. People from every part of the country, from Tripura to Tutikorin to Trivandrum, everywhere, people, everyone is covered with that. When we are taking electricity to the houses, every house, there's no distinction, there's nothing like so and so and so and so, no, there's no political, no politics, nothing at all. When the question of building home for the homeless, there's no distinction at all. Everyone, every poor must have, every homeless must have a home, you know. This is nothing but what Ayya Vaikuntha Swami wanted. We are, Today, fulfilling his dreams, his mission, his project. And we are all happy to be part of it. On this occasion, auspicious occasion, I wish everyone a very, very great future ahead. Let's all do our best wherever we are. Wherever we are, we must live it to the dream. Even uh, yesterday, Prime Minister Modi, when he he also greeted on uh, his Ayya Bhai Kuntra Swami's uh, you know, anniversary, he made the same thing, that we are fulfilling 
the dreams of Aya Vaikuntha Swami. And we have to do it. And that is how we can make a Bharat, a fully developed Vikshit Bharat by 2047. Not only for ourselves, because Aya Vaikuntha Swami was not only for look for people here, he was for the whole world. Narayana is not for <laughs> one country or another country. Narayana is for the whole creation. So it is. it was fortunate, we are fortunate that he was with us, he was born in this land. He appeared in this land. So it is our responsibility to rise and save the world and fulfill the dream of Ayya Vaikuntha Swami. I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jai Bharat. Thank you, sir. We now welcome Tiru S. Nitish Raja to propose the word of thanks. Good afternoon all. Thank you such a prayer that cannot be seen or touched. It must be felt by heart. I feel honor and privilege to get the opportunity to propose a word of thanks on this special occasion of book launch event. First and foremost, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to His Excellency Governor, Mr. Aaron Ravi, for gracing this occasion <laughs> with his esteemed presence. Your insightful words about Sanatanam and unwavering commitment to the betterment of Tamil Nadu have truly inspired us all. Your support and encouragement mean the world to us. And we are deeply to honored to have the privilege and hosting you today. Thank you, sir. I would also like to extend our gratitude to Mr. R. Ramalingam, the author of our book, Sri Mahavishnu Incarnation, Sri Vaigunda Swami Scientified Sanadana History, and convener of International Ayyapadi Confederation for sharing his expertise, passion, and dedication throughout the journey of bringing the remarkable book book to culmination, your tireless efforts in research, writing, and coordination have undoubtedly enriched our literacy landscape and provide insights of Sri Vaigunda Swami Sanatpais Sanadana history. Thank you, sir. I would like to express my heartfelt thankfulness to Mr. Durai Palam, Mr. Sita Lakshmi, Mr. Mr. Suresh Ponu, and Mr. Prem Shankar, who have made this event as unification of all Ayyapadi by blessing of Ayya Vaigunda. As our Ayya Vaigunda said, Ulagam or Kudayin ki liyenge veintum. Today, this event has remarked its presence through guidance of our Honorable Governor Mr. R. N. Ravi and Mr. R. Ramalingam. Our heartfelt thanks to go all my beloved Ayyapadi coordinators, members, contributors, participants, and attendants who have graced this book, book publishing function with their presence. Your support and enthusiasm have added immense value to this event, and we are uh, deeply grateful for unwavering encouragement. I would like to once again express our deepest gratitude to our Honorable Governor R. N. Ravi, Arthur R. Ramalingam, and all the participants to the invaluable contribution and unwavering support. It has been honor and privilege to host such an esteemed guest celebrate the launch of book Sri Mahavishnu Incarnation, Sri Vaigunda Swami Sanatified Sanatana History. Thank you all for being a part of the special occasion. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we request all of you to raise for the national anthem. Manati Nayaka Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidata Punjapa Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Utkala Bhanga Bindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jalati Taranga Tavashu 